Welcome, folks, to the first ever episode of A Look Around the Big Ten here on the Maze and Blue Review. I'm Nelson Hubble. I'm happy to be here, guys. And let's just get into it. So uh, Michigan obviously had a great game, 30-3 to win uh, over East Carolina. No surprises there, right? I uh, expected them to win by more, maybe. My prediction was 55-13 to 13 going into that game. But the defense played better than I expected. The offense left a little bit to be desired, the defense, too. And we'll get into that. So, uh, But first, let's jump over to my article that I wrote here on the Maze and Blue Reveal and take a look at – I'm going to jump in on you guys there um, – and take a look at what we saw across the league, right? So Michigan, they won 30-3. to 3. No surprise there, right? J.J. had a great game, 86.7 completion percentage, 280 yards, three touchdowns. But then Indiana, right? So Indiana, Ohio State, that game was very interesting. I watched the whole thing. Uh, it was a 3.30 CBS game. And Ohio State really struggled offensively, I thought. I was surprised. I thought their running game would be a little bit better. I thought their passing game um, would at least hit on a couple to Marvin, Har- or Marvin Harrison. And Harrison Jr. had two catches for 18 yards, right? But, uh, you know, Stover came up big for them, five receptions and 98 yards. Not big enough, I guess, against Michigan with that drop um, and the knockaway by Mike Sainer still. Uh, but and then Penn State, West Virginia, that was a 38-15 game. Drew Aller, great game, 325 yards, three touchdowns. They really leaned on him. Wisconsin was an interesting one. So they ran the ball really well. Luke Fickle, and you know, everyone's talking about, oh, he's going to throw the ball more. We're going to slay it all over the place. Uh, but really, you know, that was just kind of just hype. Like, hey, a little bit of excitement from Wisconsin fans that we're not just going to run the ball and that be the only thing we can do. Well, week one, that was pretty much all they could do. Tanner Mordecai did not play very well. Oh, we're going to get into that later as well. He threw two interceptions. But Ches Malusi and Braylon Allen absolutely showed up big time. I mean, those guys combined for 298 yards rushing, which is whoa. Uh, and then they had two touchdowns each, uh, both on a combined 30 carries, which is crazy, right? So Malusi averaged 12 yards per carry, Braylon Allen around uh, eight, I believe. And then Iowa, right? So Iowa, Utah State. Jay Higgins is my player of the game, linebacker for Iowa. And when your linebacker is your player of the game and he doesn't have an interception or a forced fumble or anything like that, not a great sign for your offense maybe. Uh, Cade McNamara, a little banged up going into that game, had a calf injury, but he played. He had a couple good throws, didn't quite top 200 yards. Really not a great offensive showing for the Hawkeyes against Utah State. Uh, they controlled the game. I'll give them that. They were in the lead the whole time. Uh, didn't really feel like Utah State was going to come back even though when they scored that late touchdown. And then Maryland versus Towson, right? Not much to talk about there. Talia Tagovailoa, great player. Going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the conference. 260 yards, three touchdowns. And then Illinois Toledo. Honestly, uh, Illinois just kind of annoyed me with that game. I thought they were going to be one of the better teams in the West this year. I didn't think they were going to beat uh, Wisconsin. Uh, but I thought they were going to be my number two team and a surprise team in the conference. That's still all on the table, right? They didn't lose to Toledo. But they had to win on a last-second field goal. Uh, Miles Scott uh, is the player of the game for them defensively. He did struggle stopping the run on the defensive side. Uh, but Scott had a pick six, so that you know, uh, it's I can't give it to anyone else. Honestly, nobody else on that team played very well. Uh, and then Purdue, Fresno State. Purdue's a big letdown, letdown team, right? Fresno State does this to people, though. That you know, any Power Five team that schedules Fresno State is putting themselves in a position to be upset. Mikey Keene, great game, 366 yards, four touchdowns, a pick. The pick, you know, whatever, right? If you're slinging the ball that much and that well, you know, and you win the game, obviously, who cares, right? So Purdue, uh, just you know, couldn't get much going uh, defensively. That you know, it's always been their problem, right? You know, Jeff Brom defensive side of things struggled offensively they could score uh Adrian, a- Aiden O'Connell a great player quarterback last year they had to replace him and Hudson Card played well but again like it's not enough right that's just how it's been uh Minnesota Nebraska gross game to watch disgusting don't want to watch it again uh three picks from Minnesota Nebraska uh really fumble that game away somehow, uh, even though they only scored 10 points, I guess that's how. Uh, but those picks really did it from Jeff Sims, and we'll get into Sims a little bit later as well. And then Ruggers Northwestern, I love football, okay? I do, trust me, right? I love college football. I do not love watching Rutgers and Northwestern. Now, let's walk this back a little bit, okay? If I had nothing else to watch, it was the first game of the year. If uh, Florida State and LSU wasn't playing later on in the day, right? or if a, a slate of great games hadn't happened the day before, I'd tune in, okay? I did not watch today. I, frankly, that was, I'm glad I didn't. Uh, Northwestern, going to be one of the worst teams in the conference. Rutgers, 
I don't know. I think Rutgers is an ascending as, ascending program, if you can see my quotes, ascending. <laughs> um, ascending program for uh, the Big Ten. And then they're going to bring in four new teams, you know? So I, it's just, you know, I, I thought Rutgers was maybe on the climb to be a middle-of-the-pack team. I like what they're doing there. They're a tough team. It's just not enough at a place like Rutgers. Piscataway, uh, you know, they, they just can't. Uh, the football program's not there. I don't know if it will ever be. Basketball program? Looking starting to look pretty good. I'll give them that. They're recruiting pretty well. So let's get to the players that impressed for me. So JJ McCarthy is on the cover here, but let's get a drawler first. So Aller, uh, love what he did. Really, you know, I was a doubter. I'm gonna be honest. He's a sophomore. I said, well, he didn't play that much last year, he didn't play that great. You know, we'll see, right? He's a five-star prospect, so we knew that um going in. Uh, but he looked as cool as a cucumber, really decisive for Penn State in his start. Uh, he went 21 for 29, 72% completion percentage, which if you can ride that out all year, he played against a power five team. West Virginia is maybe not in the greatest spot, but they're not a bad team. And he averaged 11.2 yards per attempt with those 325 yards and three touchdowns. So uh, he leads the conference uh, after week one in passing yards and he played great. So then JJ McCarthy, you know, if you're a Michigan fan, you know, JJ uh, and the offense were firing all cylinders uh, in their passing game while he was in there. Uh, you know, maybe a couple plays here and there that you wish he had back from protection wise. It kind of ruined uh, some opportunities for the Wolverines, but it is what it is. You know, Michigan played great. Uh, McCarthy set a record for completion percentage for the Wolverines. And uh, after being pulled partway through the third quarter, really he was on pace to lead the, the conference in yards. But again, this is a cupcake schedule for Michigan. It's a non-conference East Carolina. You're expected to dominate and come out partway through the third quarter or after the first half. Uh, but let's get to Wisconsin, right? So absolutely impressed by those running backs. Braylon Allen, Ches Malusi, terrific. If you, yeah, I mean, if you thought Luke Fickle, like I said, was was going to sling the rock, you're wrong. I mean, Tanner Mordecai sucked. Uh, he was bad. Those two picks were in their own territory. Uh, Buffalo's not a very good team. I don't think they'll be the worst. I think they'll probably be like an eight-win team. Uh, but should win by more, really. They left a lot on the table. Malusi, uh, Allen, absolutely terrific. Uh, Malusi had an 89-yard touchdown run, electric run. Uh, and, you know, that's a great tandem. They have the potential there to be up there with some of the other tandems in the Big Ten at Penn State, Michigan, Ohio State, uh, as as it relates to some of the best in the country, which the Big Ten is like old-fashioned Big Ten right now. I'm loving it. I love the run game. I love defense. Love seeing passing too, right? But when you get a, a good balance of both, and it's a really unique thing to the conference right now, so I love that. Uh, Noah Carter now at Michigan State. Shocked me, honestly. Watched the game. Didn't know he, you know, didn't know he was like he was didn't know he was built like that, right? Yeah, I didn't know Noah Carter had that dog in him. But he was that dude. I mean, he went out there quick, shifty, decisive, had 113 yards on only 18 carries, uh, broke free, uh, for a 21 yard catch as well. Easily the brightest spot of the offense for the Spartans, no doubt. Uh, you know, Michigan State struggled early. They pulled away late with some nice passing plays. Noah Kim struggled early again, also pulled away late. Good for him, right? Uh, I'm interested to see how that works out at Michigan State. The Spartans, you know, going to the Michigan game. I want a competitive game. I don't. I do not like blowing out our rivals at Michigan. You know, if Michigan's blowing out their rivals, it's just it's not enjoyable to watch. And, and I'm going to get into Ohio State in a little bit here, but let's take a look here at Jay Higgins, right? So Jay Higgins uh, for Iowa, he put up 16 tackles. He's my honorable mention um, for you know one of the players who surprised, impressed. Uh, 16 tackles is incredible. I'm 12 solo, very good game. That's terrific. Had one PBU against Utah State. Easily the bright spot uh, in a game that was very much quintessential Iowa. You know, no surprises in Iowa playing the way that Iowa played. Yeah, Brian Ferentz, whatever. You know, I don't think he can last too much longer, but we'll see how that goes. So Tanner Mordecai now at Wisconsin, like I said, brutal, really. The off. Uh, the offense is tailored around the running game, okay? It is what it is. Wisconsin's coaching staff did not seem very confident in him play calling-wise. Uh, when you look at a guy that goes 24 for 31, it's either the play calling uh, or it's the quarterback not being confident in himself, probably a combination of both. And they just they probably called a lot of shorter passing plays, and both of his interceptions were on passing plays within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. One he threw, uh, tried to get it over a linebacker, went right into his hands. The other one was he was the receiver was just cut right in front of their defenders in the area. Poor decisions, right? And Mordecai has now been in college football for what five years? This is his fifth season, I think, maybe, maybe six. Uh he's been around the block. So he should be making better decisions. Uh, but 
Wisconsin has other guys. You know, we'll see what happens there. And it is game one. Uh, maybe Buffalo is better than I expected, but we'll see about that. Ohio State's offense, a lot of bumps and bruises, okay? Very evident. Indiana can do this to people. We have not seen them do this to Ohio State very much. Uh, you know, a little bit of a surprise. They've usually done it to Michigan or Penn State where it's a close game where they kind of muddy the game in a way that uh, you thought the opponent should have blew them out. And the big thing for Indiana was they, they don't have an offense. It's just not there. Ohio State's defense – very good, very good. You know, they they held their ground, uh, didn't make really any spa- splash plays. Pass rush, they didn't get a sack. Uh, they got one sack, actually. It wasn't Sawyer uh, or Tumaloa. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, Michigan has similar issues. Pass rush, didn't really see anything from them. But uh, Ohio State didn't run the ball well. They didn't throw the ball well. Um, you know, McCord had 239 yards passing. Marvin Harrison only had two catches for 18 yards. Uh, I don't think this will be a trend for the Buckeyes. I do think they're going to, you know, develop, settle in, whatever it is with our new quarterback. There's going to be some bumps and bruises early, though. So no surprise there uh, that there are some bumps and bruises. I thought McCord would play a little better, frankly. Uh, I thought he was going to be one of the top five quarterbacks in the conference. I know that's a little bit of a shocker, but you know I'm not a doubter of what Ohio State's doing when it comes to quarterbacks and development. So he's been in the system, and I just I expected a little bit more. But maybe Iowa's def- or Indiana's defense excuse me, is better than I thought. And then let's move down to Michigan's running game. So it wasn't bad. Okay, it was not bad. But uh, and the offense topped 400 yards. So you know, in a game I thought they should have played better. Uh, it's fine, right? You know, but Blake Corm had 10 10 rushes, 73 yards, touchdown, was solid. You know, Donovan Edwards struggled 12 or 12 rushes, I think fit around 50 yards. Uh, but where it sits is on the offensive line, right? So. Uh, Miles Hinton didn't have a very good game at right tackle. We'll see how things work out. They need to get more cohesive, communicate a little bit more. We'll see once the starting group settles in, we'll see how that you know turns out. Right? It, does that mean that uh, Trent A. Jones starts at right tackle? Does that mean that Carson Barnhart slides to right and Ladarius Henderson plays left? I don't know. You know, I think the middle three are pretty much set with Nugent uh, at center and then left guard. Uh, you know, with Keegan and Zinter, I, I think those are set at, at the guard positions, but. Going forward, I'm sure this run game will be one of the best in the country. Donovan Edwards, Blake Corm still there. Ten NFL caliber linemen still there. It just has to settle down. And the passing game did look good uh, from Kurt Campbell in the Michigan offense. So uh, now let's move to Illinois, another team that struggled uh, as a whole. Illinois, uh, really, I, I mentioned it. I thought they should have been played better. Uh, Jazar Newton, uh, the defensive tackle for Illinois, one of the top prospects in the country at defensive tackle uh, on the Bruce Feldman freaks list. You know, I thought they should have stopped the run better, frankly. Uh, they gave up close to 200 yards rushing or right in that ballpark. And Illinois didn't look like a, a team that should be at the top of the Big Ten West. I, you know, the, they gave up, what, 4.9 yards per carry to Jacquez Stewart and Daquan Finn, Finn the quarterback for Toledo, Stewart the running back. Uh, and the difference in the game was their interception, right? So Miles Scott caught that pick. But really, Illinois needs to play better than that defensively. That was what they're supposed to hang their hat on, right? So we'll see how that turns out. But honorable mention for me is Jeff Sims at Nebraska as one of the you know worst performances of the weekend. I really honestly probably could have just thrown him in there at the top near there with Mordecai. I didn't expect a ton out of Sims coming from Georgia, Georgia Tech. I know a lot of people looked at him as one of the better prospects in the portal. Uh, but... You know, he, he played in an offense where he ran the ball a lot and he threw it a little bit too. And when he was asked to throw it a little bit more and maybe more important situations, he threw three picks. Uh, it's what kept Minnesota in the game. It's the reason they won. Sims needs to play better. You know, it's as simple as that. And we'll just see how Rule gets his quarterback right going into this week. Uh, Sims is a vet. So it should work out for them. But I thought Nebraska would frankly, win this game. And Minnesota, I thought was overhyped. And Minnesota came out with a win, and maybe they're going to prove to me later this season as they develop that, hey, I mean, we got a solid team here. Uh, there's something we can build on. We squeaked out a game that was tough for us, but we're there. Uh, so that's a little bit of review uh, there for the Big Ten. I, I know that really it's not that big of a leap to expect Michigan to be at the top. I think Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, right at the top. Wisconsin, right up there as well. We'll have great seasons, and uh, I think we'll wrap it up here, folks. Thanks for giving it a watch. Uh, Always follow me on social media. Follow 
uh, the Maze and Blue Review. Subscribe on our website, read our articles. I'm posting articles there uh, tomorrow. I got one coming out about recruiting. So give us a read guys and I'll be back here next week. So thank you for watching and uh, have a good rest of your week.